Good afternoon and thank you for joining us on Nationwide. We are live on the network service of the NTA. I'm Hawa Salihu Adama. Welcome. We start with security this Thursday as a crucial meeting on the National Security. Crucial meeting of the National Security Council has ended with a strong conviction by the Buhari presidency that normalcy will be fully restored in the nation's security situation before its tenure elapses. The National Security Advisor, Baba Gana Mongudu, who briefed newsmen after the meeting said President Buhari was unequivocal in his submission to the council members that he is not prepared to hand over a security challenge Nigeria to his successor. State House correspondent Adamu Sambu is still putting that report together and it will be brought to you in the course of this bulletin. Meanwhile, a renowned Islamic scholar and leader of the Tijaniya sect, Sheikh Dahiru Usman Bouchi, has formally briefed President Muhammad Buhari on the recent incident in Jos, Plateau State, where some of his followers lost their lives. Over now to State House correspondent Adam Sambo for details. Sheikh Dairo Usman Bauchi was accompanied to the State House by the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Dr. Isa Ali Ibrahim Pantemi. Dr. Pantemi was incidentally the one delegated by President Muhammad Buhari while in isolation to commiserate with the Islamic scholar over the loss suffered during the incident in Jos Plateau State. Sheikh Dairo Usman Bauchi is here at the instance of the president to bring him up to speed on the unfortunate situation with a view to strategizing ways of avoiding a recurrence. Speaking to NTA News after the meeting that lasted about 30 minutes, the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Dr. Isa Ali Ibrahim Pantemi, described the strategic engagement as fruitful and reassuring. The major highlights of uh, the discussion, firstly, Mr. President condoled the Sheikh and he assured him that he has directed relevant institutions to investigate and do justice. He appreciated the Sheikh for the way he promotes peace and at the same time he urged his followers to always be law abiding. The Sheikh also presented some uh, solutions to Mr. President for consideration, firstly on what happened and secondary, something that will bring everlasting peace in the country, which is what we have been yearning to ensure that there is peace everywhere. So, and at the end, Sheikh prayed for Nigeria and also prayed for the peaceful coexistence of Nigeria and also prayed for Mr. President to be successful in his leadership. The minister confirmed that the president assured the Islamic scholar that the government will study the recommendations he presented for necessary action. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Meanwhile, worried by the security challenges confronting the northern part of the country, some prominent sons and daughters of the region have developed a platform for addressing the evolving challenges. Shwaibu Onoza Yakubu reports that the platform is known as the Abuja Roundtable. Stakeholders at this event include former senior public officials and governors, retired generals, as well as other public-spirited Nigerians from the northern region of the country. Their mission is to address security challenges using the platform Abuja Roundtable. Briefing the media in Abuja, former presidential candidate Bashir Tofa noted that security challenges confronting the nation are worrisome, especially in the northern region, hence the need for collaboration among relevant stakeholders in the country. He reiterated the need to end the wanton killings and destruction of property in the north, while acknowledging the efforts of the government. As leaders, we have not even at the meeting that all is not well with northern Nigeria and taking primary over Nigeria's responsibility for the current state of affairs. The elder statesman speaks further on the mandate of the Abuja Roundtable. It is therefore for the above reasons that we have founded Abuja Roundtable and set ourselves the following objectives. One, to foster a genuine unity among the peoples of northern Nigeria. To use this unity as a platform to collectively address the challenges of insecurity and underdevelopment in the region. The stakeholders maintain that they will deepen consultations with the aim of attaining their objective. Shuaibu Onoze Yakubu, 
NTA News. The All Progressives Congress Legacy Awareness Campaign Group wants the synergy between the Army and the Air Force in the northeast and northwest in fighting the Boko Haram to be sustained and replicated in other trouble zones across the country. In a statement, national coordinators of the APC Legacy Awareness, a voluntary think tank group of the party, Salihu Mohammed Lukman, Director General APC Governors Forum, and Ismail Ahmed, National Youth Leader, APC Caretaker Committee, say the arrival of the Nigeria Navy brand new landing ship tank and the Nigerian Air Force first batch of six Super Tokano aircraft demonstrate the passion of the Buhari administration for a secure nation. The APC group believes that there is so much to be optimistic about as the security agencies under the leadership of President Muhammadu Buhari intensify efforts to secure every inch of the country and share the view that security challenges are best tackled by a combination of responses which should not be limited to kinetic military action alone. The group noted that the administration's focus on legislative reform ease of doing business and mobilizing investment in agriculture, mining and in infrastructure are all steps aimed at directly creating the right enabling environment for jobs, investment and prosperity for the populace while indirectly curbing insecurity. And President Mohamed Buhari, Tuesday, August 17, 2021, confirmed and ratified the International Coffee Agreement 2007 following the Federal Executive Council's approval of Nigeria's membership of the International Coffee Organization. The Federal Executive Council meeting had drawn a conclusion on the agreement on October 21, 2020, with emphasis on Conclusion 10, which approved the preparation of the instrument, instrument of ratification of Nigeria's membership of the International Coffee Organization and International Coffee Agreement of 2007. The 2007 agreement will strengthen the ICO's role as a forum for intergovernmental consultations, facilitate international trade through increased transparency and access to relevant information, as well as promote a sustainable coffee economy for the benefit of all stakeholders and particularly small-scale farmers in coffee-producing countries. The agreement is an important instrument for development cooperation and will provide a legal framework for core activities undertaken by the organization in the future. The instrument of ratification was prepared by the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abu Bakr Malam. Meanwhile, President Mohamed Buhari rejoices with the immediate past speaker of the Oyo State House of Assembly, Honorable Joshua Olagunju Ojo, as he turns 70 August 20, 2021. In a congratulatory message, the president salutes the commitment of the astute politician to service of the people of Ogbomosho in particular and Oyo State in general, using his privileged position to touch lives in diverse ways. As a prominent farmer, marketer, and politician, President Buhari is delighted that all progressive Congress stalwart remains resolute in the ideas of service to the people. As the fellow of the Institute of Management Executives and Administrators of Nigeria turns 70, the president wishes him longer life, good health, and greater service to God and humanity. And it's time to join Michael in our Lagos Network Center for more reports. Hello, Michael, it's over to you. Unfortunately, we cannot link up with our Lagos Network Center now, so we move on with our next report where eminent Nigerians have continued to eulogize former military president Ibrahim Babangida as he joins the League of Octogenarians 
Hussein Musa reports that the chairman, Nigeria Governors Forum and Ekiti State Governor, Dr. Kayode Fayemi, in company of Kebi State Governor Abubakar Atiku Bagudu, visited the military leader at his hilltop residence in Mina. The visit, they say, is out of respect and admiration of the former military president, General Ibrahim Babangida's patriotic service to the country. Chairman, Nigerian Governors Forum and Ekiti State Governor, Dr. Kayode Fayemi, described the octogenarian as a quintessential man of the people whose invaluable advice will continue to promote unity and development in Nigeria. He has said attaining the age of 80 in the face of many challenges is worth celebrating and prayed God to grant President Ibrahim Babangida many more years accompanied by sound health and wisdom. We, we thank God for him and everyone who reaches such an age deserves accolades and congratulations. He was a committed soldier, a professional one, who fought for the unity of this country. He did a lot on the whole range of issues and served the country with commitment and patriotism and contributed his quota to the general development of our country. And we are proud uh, of his service uh, to the country. The Ekiti State Governor, Dr. Kayo D. Fayemi, and his KB State counterpart, Abakar Atikubagudu, also made a stop at the residence of the former head of state, General Abdul Salam Abubakar. Emena Hussain Musa, NTA News. And from Mina, I hear Michael in Lagos is now ready for us with more reports on Nationwide. You're on, Michael. Thank you, Amwal. The remains of five Guinean nationals arrested by the Nigeria Customs Service for trying to export 22.3 billion naira worth of pangolin scales and elephant tusk was stored due to the absence of translator. Justice Nicolas Owebo, however, adjourned the case to August 26, 2021. Exactly two weeks ago, the Nigerian Customs Service, through its strike force team, made a major seizure. 196 sacks containing 7,137 kilograms of pangolin scales, 4.6 kilograms of pangolin claws, and elephant tusk weighing 846.34 kilograms. While this anti-smuggling drive is special, is that the pledge of the service to persecute anyone caught in the act was not a threat, but fulfilled to discourage stalking and trading in wildlife. The five suspects were supposed to face trial on a four-count charge bordering on collection, loading, exporting, and keeping pangolin scales and elephant tusks, but since they're all Guinean nationals, the charges are expected to be read to them in the language they understand. Because the court does not have uh, the facility for it today, we, the matter was adjourned, you know, to 26th of August, which is next week Thursday, for the arraignment, hoping that the interpreter will be available to be able to interpret to them to understand the charges against them. Okay, thank you. Yes, the suspect, the court has ordered that they should remain with us, you know, pending the arraignment. I think it's better we get an interpreter and uh, so that we will not constitute a clog on the will of justice. They are entitled to all that. The 22.3 billion naira worth of wildlife was seized at the Lekki Axis of Lagos. In Lagos, Ken Day, ADBC, NTA News. The National Broadcasting Commission, NBC, is reminding media practitioners to use the instrumentality of their profession to enhance national unity, peace, and security. At an interactive forum with chief executive officers of media houses in the southwest, key players attributed most security lapses experienced to fake and unbalanced news reportage. From a false publication which reported that a NAF airstrike killed 1,000 cows in Niger State to another news item which claimed to have located a crash site of Alpha Jet with the body of one of the missing pilots at Bama, the Nigerian Air Force Director of Public Relations and Information highlighted the threat of unverified news to national security and communal harmony. He however blamed breaking news syndrome. 
we must therefore avoid sensational headlines that give undue publicity to terrorists and bandits' activities, which has a tendency to undermine national security. The NBC, as a regulatory body, is not infringing on the content for broadcasts, but wants practitioners to avoid actions detrimental to national unity and cohesion. Deliberate efforts must be made to create an environment which will ensure the beneficial application of the broadcast media for human advancement. It is this effort that constitutes regulation. Chief executives of media houses who loaded the interactive session wants men of the pen profession to put ethical conduct first while discharging their responsibilities. We have a country that is ours. We have a responsibility to protect and to enable this country grow. So whatever it is that we are doing should be tailored and focused towards its growth, its unity and peace. But my approach has always been that we're supposed to be self-regulating. It does a number of things when you self-regulate. Um, it makes you more responsible. The NBC has activated 60% of licensee fees to minimize the effect of COVID-19 pandemic on the broadcast industry, but stakeholders here requested for the restructuring of the 2.5% remittance fee deducted from turnover. You're still watching Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. Let's take some messages. The news continues shortly. Please stay. Youths are about the greatest assets the country has at the moment. It is therefore not surprising that the administration of President Mahmoud Buhari is strategically responding to the yearnings of the youth through multiple projects and programs. Youth Entrepreneurship Support Years by Bank of Industry, the Youth Investment Fund by the CBN, and several other conditional cash transfer programs. Recruitment of 774,000 social workers, majority of whom are youths, and so many other projects that are beneficial to youths directly or indirectly. If the administration can do all this, definitely, with a degree of patience and time, it can achieve more. Nigerian youths must come together to say no to terrorism, no to vandalism, and no to all disruptive tendencies. Hashtag youth for greater Nigeria, pacifying the youths, unifying the nation. Forms into NTA Television College JAWS 2021 to 2022 two-year national innovation diploma program are on sale from 9th of August to 29th of October 2021. Candidates who wish to apply for admission must have 5-0 level credits in relevant subjects including English language and mathematics. The courses available for application include film and television production, broadcast journalism, and television engineering technology. The admission forms can be obtained at NTA Television College or any NTA station nationwide at the cost of 7,500 Naira only. Payment for the form is through Remita platform only in favor of NTA Television College. For more inquiries, please call 0803-079-5335 or 0806-980-9807. Management Announcer. Arise, O oh Nigerians. Let's applaud the courage of Flight Lieutenant Abayomi Dairo, a.k.a. the aggressor, for his skillful and dogged escape from the bloodthirsty bandits in the forest of Zamfara State. Three hearty cheers also to all military and security personnel who are tirelessly protecting fellow Nigerians from insurgency and banditry while maintaining peace and order. Nigerians are proud of our Biomi Dairo and all our gallant men and women in uniform for sacrificing so much to keep us safe. We admire your courage and we say thank you. God bless the armed forces. God bless Nigeria. This message is from the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. Leeds United will look to scrape themselves off the bottom of the table when they welcome Everton to Ellen Road in their second game of the season. This Saturday, it's Leeds United versus Everton on the Premier League Live, showing on the network service of the NTA from 2.30pm. The Premier League Live is brought to you by Baba Ijebu and powered by Integral.
Thanks for rejoining us. It's nationwide and we are back in Abuja. The construction of durable infrastructure and the setting up of enabling environment in the Niger Delta region have been the focus of the President Muhammadu Buhari administration. Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Godswill Akwabio says, the federal government has put in a lot of efforts to ensure that peace and stability in the region are sustained and complemented by infrastructural development. Jide Onifadi has that. At the 19th edition of the weekly executive briefing of the State House Press, Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Godswill Akwabio, says key among the infrastructure projects that the federal government is working on in the region is the completion of the famous East-West Road, which traverses the Niger Delta region. So regard that we also inherited, we were able to clear about 11 billion in 2019, which we owe to contractors on the East-West Road. And this came from the magnanimity of Mr. President when he, this, uh, on my application, he returned the East, uh, the East West Road back to the Ministry of Niger Delta. And thereafter, we have had various sums of monies released. We mobilized the contractors aside. People from the Mbiama area, Kayama and others, are quite excited with the amount of work going on. Since 2006, when the road was initiated, successive administrations have promised its completion as a campaign slogan. But the minister says the present administration is committed to the completion of the project by 2022. So we suggested that the NDDC should also come in and then budget the sum of 35 billion in 2020 budget and 2021 budget specifically for those new infrastructure that we are putting on that East West Road. Because those ones were not even contemplated both in 2006 and in 2014. And we are committed to doing that. So Apart from the east-west road, about 109 intrastate road projects have been completed. So are other projects such as housing, education, skill acquisition centers, human capital development, healthcare centers, agro-processing centers, and cleaning up of the polluted environment. But no amount of threat will make us to lose focus on the unity of this country. It is not all sweet songs as the ministry is equally facing challenges, majorly funding. For example, the minister disclosed that the international oil companies are owing the ministry $4 billion. The minister who commends President Muhammad Ubari for his support to the ministry and the Niger Delta Development Commission says the petroleum industry act would impact positively on the people of the region and stresses that great achievements start with a step in the right direction and this, he says, the president has taken. He urges the Niger Delta community to utilize the current status appropriately. In the State House, Jide Onifade, NT News. Now to science, technology, and innovation, as the minister, Dr. Ogun Naya Onu, says, the ministry is paving way for private sector and individuals who are technologically inclined to come together to see how opportunities inherent in blockchain technology are fully harnessed in the country for wealth and job creation. The minister said this when he received some experts in the blockchain technology who came to intimate him on the readiness to facilitate trackable transactions and also to know how to apply this technology to educate people. He said the introduction of this technology in Nigeria will help data protection and accuracy especially in election results, government finance, and other sensitive data. ...and continuously need data. And that data must be accurate. That data must be secure. Uh, and the, the blockchain technology gives us the opportunity to have very secure data, because what it means is that the database you know, will now be in blocks that will be chained together. So we, in the Federal Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation, we are also conducting research, you know, in this area. And uh, we'll be very happy to cooperate, to support, to collaborate uh, with um, any organization, uh, any Nigerian uh, company 
uh, that is interested you know, in this area. So Paxu is a company that has been able to harness the blockchain technology and are willing to educate Nigerians and are willing to invest in youths in Nigeria and, and people interested in technology to harness this technology. The federal government says it will continue to strengthen coordination of welfare and benefit packages for civil servants and keep welcoming partnerships that focus on boosting the morale of its workforce. The head of the civil service of the federation, Dr. Folashadi Yemieson, said this at the inauguration of the welfare building facility of the Federal Ministry of Water Resources in Abuja. Olusheye Adeagbo completes the report. With this bold caption, Welfare House, its function is clearly stated. A two-story building that houses a clinic, gymnasium, and staff canteen with applicable equipment already installed. The facility, which was designed to attend to the nutritional needs, well-being, and physical fitness of staff, was conceptualized by the Ministry of Water Resources and realized through corporate social responsibility. While the aid of service was impressed with the gesture and wants all the ministries of government, departments and agencies to do the same, Minister of Water Resources Suleiman Adamo is expecting desired productivity through better service delivery from the ministry's workforce. The civil servants already know that President Buhari has them close to his heart and anything to improve the welfare of civil servants, he pushes and ensures that we do it. It's all also in line with the international conventions of supporting all those such welfare packages in workplaces. So the facility is there, it's for everybody, and we hope that they will put it to use. Past permanent secretary, Ministry of Water Resources, Comfort Ekaro, and the president, Didi Waxon Jack, expressed joy over the realization of the project and as partners who helped with some funding testify of judicial spending as well as accountability. Representatives of staff unions who are beneficiaries were thankful to all the actors involved in this welfare package. In Abuja, Olushaye Adiago, NC News. And the former Edo State Commissioner for Arts, Culture, Tourism and Diaspora Affairs Osaze Osemige Ero is appealing to the federal ministry, federal government, to come to the aid of about 300 Nigerians who are allegedly illegally detained in Italian prisons. He made a plea during a news conference with the chairman, Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, Abike Dabiri Erewa in Abuja. Obiageli Ugoke completes the report. A group of persons led by Mr. Sazi or Sawige Ero is in NITCOM commission to notify the chairman of NITCOM, Abike Dabirerera, of the plight of Nigerians in Italian prison who are held illegally for mafia-related offenses under Act 416B, Mafia Code. Mafia Code is one of the highest criminal offense guided by the use of what the Italian security agents call Green Bible, written in 1978. Mr. Sazie Osawinge Ero was arrested as a mafia kingpin on 2nd of October 2019 in Amsterdam by Interpol on his way to official duty in Germany and was charged for being a member of a mafia organization which he says he knows nothing about. Detained for 18 months and was released on the 25th of August. He says he is raising alarm for innocent Nigerians who do not have a voice and are languishing in prison. They are prosecuted and charged for the same alleged mafia criminal offenses with no concrete evidence, with some sentenced to 140 years in prison using the Italian Mafia Criminal Code. Yes, I've been released, I've been exonerated, but if I do not create this awareness, these innocent Nigerians who do not have a voice will be languishing in prison for crime they did not commit. Two of the guys I met in Torino prison are what they really met up. Chairman Nigerian in Diaspora Commission promised that the Nigerian government will intervene and ensure all innocent Nigerian citizens are released. First thing we are going to do with the formal letter we've received from you, we're going to 
taken up with the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation. There are many cases that the Attorney General of the Federation, Mr. Malami, has handled that has to do with the Nigerian city diaspora being maltreated. The group says plans are set to stage a protest in Lagos, in Italian embassy, and London in September to create awareness on these innocent Nigerians detained under harsh condition in Italy for crimes they did not commit. Obiageli Ugoke, NTA News. Humanitarian activism back on tree planting in Meduguri. Abu Bakr in our Meduguri Network Center is on standby. You're on. Always good to see you, Hawa, and thank you for joining us. International and national humanitarian actors led by the Borno State Agency for Sustainable Development Goals and Humanitarian Response have joined counterpart charitable actors the world over to mark World Humanitarian Day 2021 with the hashtag plant your root in Bornu. The agency in collaboration with United Nations Office for Coordination of, for Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs and other development partners as well as critical stakeholders in Bornu embarked on a tree planting across the state capital as part of global race for climate change. Jadwa John Jesney reports that Borno State Deputy Governor Umar Usman Kadafur run the last lap of the race in support of protection of human race. Climate change has over time been a social and environmental determinant of health and other facets of life ranging from clean air, safe drinking water, food sufficiency as well as livelihood among others. The World Humanitarian Day 2021 focuses on bringing together partners across the humanitarian system to advocate for survival, well-being and dignity of people affected by crisis, among which Borno State is a major point of contact in northeastern Nigeria, leading the campaign with the hashtag plant you. Special advisor to the governor on SDGs, Dr. Mayro Mandara and her team had visited the Borno State Civil Service, police headquarters, educational, health, as well as traditional institutions engaging them in tree planting campaign. Dr. Mayro added that the campaign, which has so far given out hundreds of trees to be planted, will help in replacing trees cut down due to the Boko Haram insurgency, as well as carry on with the historic practice of Kanim Borno Empire. We're encouraging everybody to plant their root in Borno, to plant a tree, nurture the tree to fruition, and make sure you contribute to the development and rebuilding of Borno State. Having run the last lap of the global race for climate change on behalf of the Borno State Governor, Deputy Governor Umar Usman Kadafur commended the agency and other development partners for prioritizing the health and well-being of Borno citizenry. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's and every one of us, uh, please, uh, try uh, plant this tree, not in the environment, the tree in Borno State. Representatives of UN Ocha, GISCO, and various stakeholders visited are sure to support and sustain the campaign for the betterment of all. In Meduguri, Jadua, John Jesni. NTA News. National Youth Service Corps members have been described as critical agents of change that can contribute meaningfully to nation building during and after their one-year mandatory program. This came up during a one-day training on responding to a disaster for Corps members under the National Emergency Management Agency Community Development Service held in Meduguri, the Borno State Capital. Here are more details of the story. It has impacted a lot of knowledge, especially in us, in what we can do in our dexterity. So we are expected as an emergency management vanguard to carry out uh, safety uh, assistance wherever and whenever the need arises. This program is indeed impacting to all of us, and I guess I, I know that we'll give out our best. The society should um, expect a lot from us. Batch B, Stream 1 and 2 core members posted to Borno State appreciating the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, for acquainting them with rudiments of disaster management, assessing series of demonstrations on disaster management, as well as application of first aid, Northeast Zone NEMA, Lydia Modu Wagami, who represented the Director General of the agency, said core members should be seen as game changers that can play an integral role, especially in responding to emerging emergency situations in the country 
hence the training. What we expect from them is just to be emergency managers and to also serve as our first responders at the grassroots because they are found in every nook and crannies, they are found in the villages and most of the times disasters are locally based. The event featured an in-depth overview on disaster management by Northeast Head of Planning of NEMA, presentation on basic first aid, as well as introduction to search and rescue equipment. And those are the latest stories at this time from Meiduguri. Let's now go back to Hawa in Abuja, who has more reports for us on Nationwide. Hawa. Certainly, Abubakar, many thanks. And here in Abuja, the All Progressives Congress National Appeal Committee has urged party members in Kwara State to take advantage of the platform in addressing their grievances concerning the just concluded World Congresses of the party. Governor Abdurrahman Abdurrazak assured the Committee of Cooperation and Support to further unite the APC in the state. Olaji Debello completes the report. Abdurrahman Abdurrazak, who was represented by his deputy, Kamadeh Alabi, at the stakeholders meeting, sees APC as one united family committed to the development of Kwara State. While there may be few complaints in some quarters, the governor advocated love and self-respect among party faithful to move APC forward and deliver more dividends of democracy to the people. Let us think about Kwara. We got elected because the people wanted us to look after Kwara. Not ourselves. Chairman of the National Appeal Committee, Yusuf Baku, had earlier informed the stakeholders of modalities to submit their complaints with a promise to be fair to all aggrieved members. When we came here, they gave us some appeal for Abuja. We will look into this appeal, but we are also telling you that there will be opportunity for those who did not give the appeal in Abuja to do it here. Stakeholders from across the state pledged their loyalty and continued support for the party under the leadership of Governor Abdurrahman Abdurrazak on Large Day Bello, NTA News. I'm from Ilori. We take you to Port Harcourt, and Doris is next with more reports. Thank you, Howell. Welcome to Port Harcourt. The River State Governor Yinsun Wike has directed that all shanties and illegal structures along the eastern bypass be demolished within one week to enable the contractor handling the project do a proper job. The governor gave the directive while speaking to journalists after the inspection of some ongoing projects in the state. Oge Dinyekwiri reports. The first port of call was the eastern bypass where the governor was impressed with the quality of work but expressed his reservations on the slow pace. Uh, I've directed my chief security officer to make sure all those uh, shanties along the eastern bypass must be demolished. Uh, we have told members of the public that if you want to do this dance, that you need for you to acquire a place and to carry out your business activities. The governor also visited the Dr. Peter Audley Cancer and Cardiovascular Diseases Diagnostic and Treatment Center, as well as the neighbor Graham Douglas Law School. He expressed optimism that the contractor will complete the job in record time, going by the pace of work. He lauded the residents for their show of understanding and patience following the attendant breed block occasioned by the construction work across the state. Governor Wike reassured motorists and commuters that they will soon heave a sigh of relief in some parts of the city with the completion of the Rumola and Jarwe flyovers in September. In Port Harcourt, Oge Dinyegwe, NTA News. The federal government is fine-tuning modalities to provide lasting solution to the lingering boundary dispute between Akwaibom and Cross River states. Director General National Boundary Commission disclosed this as a sensitization visit with stakeholders of the affected boundary conflict in Akwaibom state. Kelvin Samuel reports. Stakeholder sensitization meeting between members of the affected communities, state government, and the representative of the National Boundary Commission provided an opportunity to brainstorm in order to come up with lasting solution that will put an end to the lingering boundary disputes between Akwaibom and Cross River states, which they say has claimed 
many lives. As separate speeches, the state deputy governor represented by the permanent secretary and the representative of the National Boundary Commission assured the people that an end is in sight as the commission has already concluded plans for proper boundary demarcation, which is the reason for their visit to collect vital data that will assist in decision making. The making series of efforts to ensure that peace is being restored between us and the people of Ogopani in cross the states. The National Boundary Commission considers this meeting as an opportunity to assess our collective efforts and relevant issues on the interstate boundaries with a view to advancing the cause of boundary demarcation. The team, after a meeting with the two local government stakeholders, also visited the people of Uran local government area and agreed that justice will be done and peace restored to all the affected communities. In Uyo, Kelvin Samuel, NTA News. That's our bit from Paul Tarkert. Nationwide continues in Enugu with Chineye after the break. The most affordable digital pay TV platform with the widest signal coverage in Nigeria. Dedicated to bringing the best TV entertainment around the world to your screen. From Hollywood to Bollywood to Nollywood, we offer the most affordable subscription. Enjoy over 75 channels for as low as 1,700 Naira. Like Nacho Wild, BBC, ESPN and premium sports like Emirates FA Cup, La Liga, Bundesliga. Wrestling, what's more exciting? We have the most flexible payment options in Nigeria. Don't dull. Join us now for an exciting journey. Star Times, enjoy digital life. Leeds United will look to scrape themselves off the bottom of the table when they welcome Everton to Ellen Road in their second game of the season. This Saturday, it's Leeds United versus Everton on the Premier League Live, showing on the network service of the NTA from 2.30pm. The Premier League Live is brought to you by Baba Ijebu and powered by Integral. <laughs> Thank you so much for staying on. Welcome to Enugu. In the face of the security challenges in the Southeast Zone, the Nigerian Army has assured the people of its commitment to ensuring peace and security in the zone. Garrison Commander 82 Division of the Nigerian Army, Brigadier General Christian Ataki, gave the assurance when he received vehicles donated to the Army by the Enugu State Government. Susan Eze has the details. Sustaining collaborations and aiding the operations of security agencies in the state is one of the strategies the Enugu State Government is deploying to ensure that the security apparatus in the state is functional and effective. In line with this cardinal objective, two HELOX vans are here being donated to the 82 Division Nigerian Army by the Enugu State Government to support their efforts in maintaining peace and security in the state and in the Southeast Zone. And it is a recognition and in pursuit of its cardinal objective of sustaining the peace and security in Enugu State that His Excellency has approved the procurement of these two Toyota Hilux vehicles for the Nigerian Army to help the Army in providing security in the state. I wish to assure you and assure the good people of Enugu State that we will continue to do our best to ensure that the peace we are enjoying in Enugu and indeed across the southeast. And still on security issues, the Imo State Police Command has set in motion strategies to eradicate human rights violation in the drive towards effectively securing the state. The Commissioner of Police, Rabiu Husseini, made this known while briefing newsmen in Oweri. Dorita Arinze Egwim has details. The fight against insecurity in Imo State has continued to take various dimensions. 
The determination to rid the state of insurgency and criminality has seen the arrest of most members of some terrorist groups, including some key leaders of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra IPOP. To consolidate on this effort, the State Commissioner of Police, Rabi Husseini, who recently assumed duty, says the command is committed to building public confidence through respect for human rights, even in the face of increased visibility policing. He says, despite the loss of some officers in the fight against insecurity in the state, the officers remain resolute in their effort at securing lives and property. There shall be zero tolerance to crimes and criminalities as such. We shall take the battle against criminality to the day and hide out of these hoodlums. Imo Command, under my watch, shall take issues of human rights very seriously. He therefore urges all criminal elements to retreat in order to avoid severe consequences. In Oweri, Lorita Rizzi, Wim, NTA News. And those are the stories from Enugu. We will now rejoin Hawa in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Hawa, it's back to you. Thank you, Chineye. The Zamfara State Police Commander succeeded in rescuing 11 persons abducted by bandits in Bakura local government area of the state on the 12th of August 2021. Also rescued by the police is the Chief Security Officer of the Zamfara College of Health sciences and technology who was kidnapped at his residence in the early hours of wednesday august the 18th 2021 a statement by the zamfara state police command says the rescued captives will undergo medical checkup and be debriefed before they are reunited with their families the statement further reassures people of the state that the police in collaboration with other security agencies are working relentlessly towards ensuring safe rescue of all the kidnapped victims across the state. Still on security, the Nigeria Police Trust Fund has taken delivery of security and health equipment, as well as other operational vehicles procured for the force. Francis Form reports that the combat vehicles and medical equipment worth billions of Naira is expected to enhance efficiency in crime detection, prevention, and control. The equipment, made up of 1,090 ballistic helmets and 640 bulletproof vests, as well as medicals and medical equipment, worth over 7 billion naira for the Nigeria Police Force. Governors of Kebi and Zamfara states were at the force headquarters on a different mission. Later joined their host, Usman Al-Kali Baba, and the Minister of Police Affairs to inspect the 200 operational combat vehicles. Interestingly, all these items have been tested and found to be of good quality by the end users. So we are very happy that uh, what is here is, is, is good and acceptable to the end user. The Minister assures the force of government's commitment to equipping the police with modern technology to combat crime. Frank says from NTA News. And the Defense Headquarters is intensifying mobilization and collaboration with retired military officers to enhance intelligence gathering from the grassroots. This was the focus of the Chief of Defense Staff, General Loki Irabos, meeting with retired senior military officers within the North Central Zone in Makudi. Sandra Dowese Akeme completes the report. Rising insecurity in the country has called for consent by all security stakeholders in the country. The Chief of Defense Staff, General Loki Irabo, in an interactive session with retired senior military officers within the North Central Zone, stressed on the need to tap from the experience and for a variety of inputs from different stakeholders to combat the rising insecurity in the region and indeed the country. We also believe that as members of the armed forces and security agencies, that even though we lead in creating the conditions for peace and security to reign in the country, we also have listening ears. That those who have contributions to make, they have the opportunity to make such contributions. 
The Air Officer Commanding Tactical Air Command, Idi Lubo, said, the party is important as it has given them the opportunity in exchanging ideas in combating insecurity. I know that my very senior partners here who have retired some of you very long time ago, you are very close to the grassroots. You are here on the invitation of the Chief of Defense Staff to share on a common subject that is dear to the leadership of the country, finding answers to the security challenges in the country. For those of us that are now retired, and all the various segments of society are supposed to come on board so that together we can find solutions that will be long-lasting. One fact is, those of us that are out feel a whole lot freer to bear our minds on issues like this. In Makudi, Sandra Doisi Akeme, NTA News. And the Nigerian Navy's secondary school, Okura, has again retained its position as number one and the fifth edition of the Chief of the Naval Staff Annual Intersports Interschool Debate and Quiz Competition 2021 Finals. Gabriel Amonike completes the report. The Chief of Naval Staff Annual Interschool Quiz and Debate Competition is designed to quiz young minds on English mathematics, current affairs, amongst others. Chief of Naval Staff, represented by Flag Officer Commanding Central Naval Command, Rear Admiral Sanus Ibrahim, says this year's inter school quiz and debate competition with the team Education as a Catalyst for Youth Development and National Security is designed to equip future leaders to address national issues. We saw the level of knowledge displayed by these students, their eloquence, and how they addressed most of those their debate topics. The director of Nava Education, Commodore Issa Ahmed, said the competition, while offering students opportunity in critical thinking, will develop their research and communication skills. The school that came out presented an automated irrigation scheme, wherein we are going to have food round the clock throughout the whole year. Four out of the seven schools made it to this year's finals. After a keen contest involving the four schools, NNSS Okura emerged the winner of the year's quiz competition, while NNSS Port Harcourt clinched the first position in the debate category. We had sleepless nights, we missed classes, all because we had to participate in this competition. And we thank God that we came out excellently. Have it to your mind that you are a winner and nobody is a loser. At least we have second, we carry something back to our school. Some dignitaries received an award, including the Zona Director Entry Port Harcourt Network Center, Apostle Adebayo. In Port Harcourt, Gabriel Amonike, NTA News.